Hi, my name is Bai and I'm with Dennis. Welcome to the Future Creative. So Dennis, tell me a bit about yourself. Yo man, Bai, thanks for having me first of all. Um, you know, pleasure to be here. Um, so about myself, so I'm Dennis, you know, I have uh, an artistic career, you know, which I've been at since uh, 2016. Um, my works, you know, are just mostly about celebrating um, who I am and my experiences and, you know, just uh, kind of highlighting the, the, the good parts of it. And um, who else am I? I'm also a family man, you know, I'm a brother, you know, I am a, I am a thinker, I'm a traveler, and most importantly, I am a lover, <laughs> not a fighter. <laughs> yeah. So like, how did you, how did you get started in this world? Man, to be honest, like, uh, I'd say it's, it was, uh, it was more of, you know, having this, this calling, it, so to speak, in the sense that um, I studied uh, business management in university. I uh, graduated and did a master's in entrepreneurship. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, I was scaring towards, uh, 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 like, you know, running a business, you know, mm -hmm. or like, you know, the corporate world. And I had a stint in the corporate world where I worked in mm -hmm. consulting and oils, also in oil and gas. And, you know, during those periods, you know, while they were, you know, they offered, like, you know, they helped me in my personal development. Yes. I'd say, like, uh, it was also very tough for me because I didn't feel fulfilled. You know, when you feel like you should be doing more, so it kind of felt like I was lying to myself and lying to the people around me, yeah. especially when I was out with my friends and, you know, you know, even my friends who were lawyers, who were into like um, finance, you know, they talk about their job with so much passion and I'm out here like, you know, I'm doing this and, you know, I don't know how I feel about it. So, yeah, so I think it came to a point where change was needed and, you know, I was kind of forced into, you know, like... Uh, into having to make the decision mm -hmm. and this was back in i believe 2016 mm -hmm. and you know i remember you know after you know leaving the job and telling my my dad that you know that I, you know this is what i want to do mm -hmm. obviously you know the third gone crazy yeah <laughs> you know it's because it's tough it's like you know you just left certainty just to face this uncertainty so like you know what are your plans what do you have to do and yes, yeah, so I think uh, because lucky for me, unfortunately for me, I had that um, that background of like, you know, kind of learning how to work mm -hmm. and assist them. You know, I really just uh, applied that to my art and I think it really helped me like, you know, just get things started. And, you know, just to cut it short, to answer your question very directly, um, mm -hmm. I'd say, um, I started by, you know, doing everything, you know, I did t-shirts, I did like key holders, I did, uh, you know, paintings on walls and all of that stuff, you know, just because I remember the first day I was just trying to make ends meet, like, you know, I was just trying to, you know, at least sell something. So, you know, when I first started, I was earning like $30, that's like how much in there is like, uh, Probably yeah, 10K, yeah, exactly ten like k yeah. or lower, even like five thousand naira a month. Yeah, and you know it was tough, you know. But like, what I realized today is that um, I wasn't even thinking about how much I was making. It was it's to it's now that I realized that damn those days that was how much I was making. But I was just solely driven by purpose and you know by this mission that you know this is what i've decided to do mm -hmm. my parents think i'm crazy so i also want to prove to them that i'm not yeah. you know and you know and i think uh lucky for me like everything worked out mm -hmm. and you know here we are today how do your fam take it though bruh i mean i'm lucky because like you know i always say that my parents are you know they are very um, traditional people mm -hmm. you know but one thing i think they are very good at is also like you know giving you space to you know like kind of make your decisions and i'd say 
you know, obviously they thought I'd gone crazy because, you know, you have this, you know, this business degree, you can get a job clearly. So why yeah. are you deciding to do this? Mm -hmm. um, but like, I think, um, I think they just left me to it because maybe they just were like, well, he'll see how hard it is. It's right. Will, yeah, it will yeah, fire yeah. him and then Scared run back. <laughs> and then he'll run back to, to, to uh, what do you call it? run back to his nine to five yeah but you know i think uh i think they just saw me really working working you know they saw me like you know every day you know i'm doing something i'm going somewhere i'm bringing something home you know and uh, i think my first solo exhibition which was in red door in 2017 remember the future yeah yo we walked on it together yeah, so gee. yo oh, me and by we go way back <laughs> way back yeah so yeah, yeah so um so yeah i remember the first exhibition when like you know everything came together i i, I sent them a personal invite because you know i thought it was very important for them to come and see for themselves you know you know the decision manifest yeah and i think um yeah it was just a good moment because you know they invited all their friends you know mm -hmm. and you know and yeah. it really just changed the conversation to my dad you know calling me to ask me yo my friend told me about artists doing postcards that sells do you do postcards you should do postcards i'm like dad you need to chill i yeah. got this so. yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah <laughs> damn all of a sudden the conversation now changed right yeah changed. yeah that's really yeah. how it happens but like i'm sure it would have taken a bit of mental as well to like actually jump mm -hmm. you know which is something that i always like talk about with with my friends is the fact that you kind of need to jump to be able to like know whether or not you're gonna yeah. you know do the thing yeah you know, sink or swim fly yeah. or die yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so like what advice would you give would you have given yourself at that point in the in the story <laughs> in the journey that's actually a good question yeah. um you know just to also add to what she said i also feel like a lot of the times um, we're also so afraid of failure, so we never start. And you know, I always think about it like this. The worst that can happen is it doesn't work out, you fail. But bro, the, the, the best that can happen is so limitless. You know, it's like uh, you could be opening in LA today, tomorrow you're on the front cover of a magazine, tomorrow you're listed, you know. Yeah. It's, it's like success is so like it's worth the risk it's yeah. worth the failure you know it's worth the hard time so you know just to add to that level of uh you know that og wisdom mm -hmm. of just mm -hmm. taking the leap yeah um but i'd say um to answer the question mm -hmm. what would i advise myself earlier on i'll just tell myself to chill like you know just cool your blood you know like everything will be fine <laughs> you know like um take the failures as well take the the lows you know accept them because you know these are all learning curves you know mm -hmm. i wouldn't change you know the way i did it i'll just say that i'll just try to improve my mindset in those periods because you know i think during the failures i was very very hard on myself mm -hmm. and um yeah i think i'll just yo dennis it's all good you know you got this tomorrow wake up be positive attack the day you know see your daily prayers you know <laughs> yeah man, for sure for sure you know um I, I i talk about failing forward as well a lot and but, yeah. you know it's basically this concept that just because you try and you fail it doesn't mean you've lost like it's a marathon it's not a sprint and like sure you might trip but it doesn't mean it's the end of the world if you've got that, you know, vision and you mm -hmm. have that like persistence mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And it's a message I'm constantly trying to push out into the world, mm -hmm. especially for the young African creators out there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I want to know from you, like, what is one of the hurdles or challenges that you faced, and how did you overcome that? Uh, um, in terms of huddles, I'd say um, for me it was it was mostly a personal huddle in terms of like you know I think I had to grow confidence in the medium I was using mm -hmm. and in the narrative I was trying to push yeah. 
I think um, especially as an artist who is self-taught you know because you're learning about the masters mm. you're, you're like you know going to interact with like let's say these galleries in Nigeria who tend to know it all yeah. you know and generally galleries around the world who also tend to know it all you know like you know you kind of feel a bit intimidated or mm. you feel a bit not on par with like let's say the practices and the mediums and the storytelling like imposter syndrome exactly you know yeah. basically because you're new to it so i think for me that that was like a very big hurdle like for me to kind of even not even jump over breakthrough because you know it was like um, I know this medium keeps me going, you know, I know this medium keeps me inspired. Mm -hmm. I know this medium also allows me to tell my story in the best way possible, you know, so like, you know, why am I doubting this medium? You know, why are people, like, I remember my first show, like, some guy came straight up to me and it was like, yo, like, your medium is easy, so it's not acceptable as art you know and i remember in that moment he was like bro like you know <laughs> you either sink or swim <laughs> like fuck that shit like you know it yeah. was you know it was like it was hard to take because you know it was like you know you, who gives you the right to just come up to me do you know what i've had to put into yeah, right to, to to bring this artistic vision out and then for me the more i grew and learned you know you really learn about your craft and the the importance of you know like having a vision like an artistic vision that has to come out no matter the level of production that comes into it no matter how much they pay you to even bring it out mm -hmm. no matter how fast it is it's a mm -hmm. process yeah and you know and you have to really respect and be honest with that process and i think for me once i embodied that phase and you know i i really like you know just jumped you know i was just like fuck it like this mm -hmm. is what i'm doing yeah. this is what i'm about yeah you know and yeah and i just really jumped through it mm -hmm. um i'd say in terms of things that were out of my control you know i thought also like you know the gallery system was something that i couldn't really wrap my head around you know i thought that it was very restrictive for artists who had like a different thing to say especially mm -hmm in nigeria mm -hmm. in west africa in africa mm -hmm. you know i think uh, they demand a certain aesthetic from artists they demand a certain type of storytelling you know it's certain type of reality based work mm -hmm. you know which is all important but you know like we're all individuals and for me i found that like you know the the like social media really helped me express you know it really helped me express myself and it really helped me connect with like you know the true ones you know it's like you know a lot of the times you try to attend to the many and that's what you know these establishments do but like when you find a, a system that allows you build your own community based mm -hmm. on your differences and your statements you know yeah. i think for me like you know i found i thought that you know if this is the system i want to be a part of it but i want to also change it you know mm -hmm. i want to also show people that you know you can do it in a different way in the 21st century you know like why in the 21st century we cannot like um create the same way dali and picasso used to create we cannot run our arts shop or mm -hmm. even our arts business the same way like uh <laughs> like the, the the old people did it you know we have to show and prove that you know where the creatives of yeah of now century. right yeah. well, how can you use mud and like water to draw on wall <laughs> exactly just because it's how it was done before <laughs> exactly right? you know so it's like about kind of like keeping up with the times and also like understanding the context and the mm -hmm. reference point for where we are mm -hmm. now as well mm -hmm. you know like so a bit onto your work i mean you know what like, what inspires it for those who may not have any frame of reference into what you do what inspires your work and what what what, what was the spark or yeah man so i think my work is very 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 inspired by you know myself mm -hmm. you know it's very inspired by the content i take in yeah. and it's also inspired by you know what what inspires me in terms of um like you know i think uh, a lot of the times i've been drawn to pop art i've been very drawn to street art you know i've been drawn to you know works that you know that just 
bring my spirit to life, you know, like colors, you know, like, you know, sh like shiny, glossy sculptures, you know, like just things that you can't define, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think we're having this conversation where we're all surrounded with words, like everything around you is like a chair, is a wall, like there are words, and I think the point of art you know, is to distort that word, like where you can't even explain what you, what it is you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, like I try to just try to, you know, allow my work sit in that corner of like, you know, being undefinable as to what it is, you know, but I'm also very inspired by, you know, my heritage as a Nigerian, as a Igbo boy, you know, who used to go back to the village every Christmas because you know I had no choice you know yeah. I couldn't tell my parents yo Christmas is lit in Lagos <laughs> I need to stay back yeah you man, know. they don't they don't relate they don't relate yeah they're like nope you have to you know go and experience culture and you know then I didn't understand it but today I'm so grateful because like it was when I went back home that, you know, you see masquerades, you see people in masks, mm -hmm. you see them dancing, you see these festivals. And, you know, then, you know, obviously it was scary. So I used to ask questions like, you know, why is he flogging people? Why is he wearing <laughs> Right? <this?" laughs> yeah. And, you know, what is so crazy is that also then, that was when I used to experience science fiction because, you know, mm. that's when they'll tell me that, you know, when they put on the mask, when they put on the masquerade costumes, they've transformed. And you know, and so I remember someone was telling me yeah. like science fiction is not like a Nigerian thing. I'm like, bro, like forget science fiction based on space. We've been going to space in the village, bro. Right. You get me? Right. <laughs> on that astral tip. <laughs> on that astral tip, you know. So 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 you know, it's it's powerful when you really look back and yeah. you. And you know you want to create with the tools you you've taken in as a child, mm -hmm. especially as a Nigerian, because yeah. you know I I keep saying Nigerian because we have all the source. You know, it's just all Ice. about us, like Ice. you know, just pulling it out and yeah. you know owning it. So yeah. so yeah. Yeah, man, that's what's up. So like we've spoken about it before, but like what's your what's your take on African art? Bruh, <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> hear that term, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's that tomboy stuff? <laughs> yeah, um, yo. yo, so I mean, I, I, I feel like, you know, this is a drum I keep, you know, banging. And, you know, I am keep saying it till at least someone hears me. I think, um, you know, the term African art, I think is quite distracting because I feel like, again, you know, as a Nigerian Igbo boy, <laughs> you know, like as a as a Lagosian, you know, I've lived and worked here all my life. So I have my own experiences that are very unique to even somebody living, even living in Festac. My experiences are totally different from somebody living in Lekki, in Facts. Koi. Do you understand? And I think um, for me, it's crazy to, to then, you know, to then like, when you think about it from creating in Lagos you now say the same like you say artists who are creating in Cape Town in Joburg you know that their works are similar because they're African bro Africa is a massive continent like it's a massive continent with different experiences and how do we document if we just lump everything under the term African art mm -hmm. you know how do we like you know even embody this i say creative renaissance happening now in with the youth and we lump it under african art it's such injustice mm -hmm. and you know i think for me like i just want to kind of just break that meaning and that's why you know i'm bringing forward this term new african you know where it's kind of simultaneously deals with the topic but it also offers a new way to think about it in terms of like you know we all different. We all have different perspectives. We want to reflect what we are doing in this moment. Mm -hmm. The different movements in this moment, like from let's say Afrofuturism to you know this to that, you know whatever it is, because you know we need to document these things. Yeah. You know, no one is gonna do it for us. And the truth is that if we keep waiting for them to do it for us, they'll keep writing on their our stories. And yeah. you know, 
we keep complaining so I'm trying to just document you know mm-hmm. but I need I need like the historians to come on board yeah. <laughs> you know the curators to come on board but with time you know uh, people would hear mm-hmm. thanks yeah. yeah man so um, I don't know are there any sort of resources that helped you out like along your journey oh that's such a good question yeah man. I think um yeah I think YouTube <laughs> Google Twitter Instagram you know all, basically all the free tools <laughs> they all helped me like literally like even the people the people I haven't connected with all free tools you know so I think as an artist of this generation you really really have to you know use what is available to you like for example I learned my craft through YouTube like you know how to use it you know I learned about like let's say when I have problems with like let's say a software or a printing issue or even like uh, <laughs> even how to phrase an email you know you go on Google and you just type that shit out like you know how do you say no in a nice way <laughs> Google that shit bro and it's there right you got the answers Absolutely. you get me so um so yeah I think the tools for me were all the free tools we use every day and um, you know I think uh, the problem with the world is that like you know there's just so much shit now like there's just so many things so it's like your power is to kind of also limit the focus to you know how you can use it don't Mm -hmm. try to also use everything you know don't try to overwhelm yourself right yeah so yeah so there's I guess there's a common misconception that being an artist is challenging, it's so challenging to the point that it's like, it's overwhelming, like you can't hack it. And that's probably like a bit of what the fan might have thought when they were like, oh yeah, just let him do this then, you know, let him see how crazy the real world is, you know? Um, why do you think people see it that way? I mean, to be honest, cause I think, cause it's true. I think that's reality. I mean, speaking as an artist, I will not advise anybody to be an artist, bro. If you tell me you want to be an artist, I'll be the one to say, bro, go and get your job. Because, like, are you ready for this? You know, because even along the journey, you find out that it's bigger than you. And what it is is that you're literally a vessel, (laughs) you know, and you're just here to transmit your ideas. And how many people can take that, you know, like, because as an artist, as a creative, you know, you go through these different phases of, you know, your ego, your this, people telling you shit, like, you know, everyone telling you your shit, and then mm. everybody telling you that you're the shit. You're the you, you, so it's like two different mindsets, <laughs> you know, just even thinking, I'm speaking even from the mental point, you know, and then yeah. on even on the physical scale, like the material scale, like, you know, it's expensive, you know, bringing an idea to life, it's expensive putting together a show, you know, it's, it's, I mean, realistically, it's a very hard path, and mm-hmm. especially in a country like Nigeria, a city like Lagos, where there's no much structure. Mm-hmm. As a young, you know, artist, you are literally in the creative industry right now. Yeah. We are, like, we've had this conversation, we're literally building the road, like, you know, we're literally, we're doing it with our bare hands, yeah. you know, and uh, people don't see, you know, like, and people always see us, they just see us out on Friday nights looking good, mm-hmm. or they see us out at an event yes, and we're looking we good, yes, you do. know, always, and still, and they always feel like, you know, just being an artist is, you know, you're drinking wine, you know, you're painting topless, mm-hmm. you know, you're having women come around and all of that and you know not to say you know that's not the perk (laughs) yeah you know but like it's 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 bigger than that you know it's uh you know it's 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 a very um like you know we we work hard but i think we're so good at making it look like you know we don't work hard because you know we look so good yeah (laughs) you know and uh and i think um yeah i think it's it's you know it's 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 realistically speaking it's tough but like uh you really have to really, you know, you really have to be honest with yourself in what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yeah. And persevere through the highs and the lows. 
man. You know, it's 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 fun as well. You know, if you if you if if you're if if, if you do it and you do it right. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. What's the common misconception that people have about you? <laughs> yo, 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 yo. That's some self awareness to yeah, a still, million still, levels. Still levels. What's the misconception people have about me? I think uh, generally because of my demeanor as a, as the human being that I am, they tend to think, you know, I'm just very chill, mm -hmm. you know, but I think uh, when it comes to like, you know, really getting things done, <laughs> you know, I'm very like, you know, I'm very like on point, like I'll wake you up by 8 a.m. like, you know, I'll you know, I will fly there. <laughs> you know, I, I can be. I get very intense. You know, when yeah. I want to get things done. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that misconception is based on my demeanor. It's like, ah, he's chill. Yeah. He's easy going. So I think most times when I work with this, like let's say galleries abroad, and like we've spoken on the phone, and you know, we've had all of this. When they see me in person and we chill and we mm -hmm. talk, they're like, wow, you're actually a <laughs> chill guy, bro. You're actually chill, so yeah, yeah. you know. So yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, well, that's cool. <laughs> so if you were if you were gonna do another profession, like what would it be and why? Oh my God! Do you know that I keep saying this? If I wasn't an artist, I would probably be. I mean, I guess they are artists as well. I'll probably be a furniture designer mm. because, like, yo, I love furniture. I, I love interior design. I yeah. think I'd really do that. But if it's something, again, if it's not that, I'll probably be working advertising, you know. I watched Mad Men and I was like, yo, bruh. Don't <laughs> you yo, get me? <laughs> you know, and just the way they come together and create an idea collectively. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. it. Or I guess I'll be an architect, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I want to say pilot because it sounds cool, but like, you know, bruh, those turbulences, I don't know how people go through them, you know, and stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Something outside of like creating, what would I do? I'll probably be the manager of a boxer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's actually a fun job. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Creative spectacle. <laughs> you get me. I mean, for those who don't know, I mean, I know you're, you're a fan of spectacles. Why don't you tell, tell the listeners about, you know, the old days in school with the... Oh like, my what, what happened? What happened? What happened? What was that? What was that? <laughs> How do you even get that? That's a yo. research, bro. <laughs> yo, yo, that's cool that you know you did that research because yeah, that's yeah. deep, man. I think uh, I just again, young me. I just wanted to express myself. I had all this energy is inside of me that I just wanted to throw out to the world, and I think. Uh, you know, it manifested into that, and you know, even manifested into me making rap music. Into what as well. though? For those who are listening, the, <laughs> into what? I don't even <laughs> want to mention it, fam. I don't want to. But yeah, it's you know, it was uh, it was from, you know, it was from dancing. You know, just to bust those moves, all the energy within me, <laughs> and then you know, I think. Then you know, I, I also rapped as well. Mm -hmm. I did some music, you know, and then I think you know, it's always like just this creative bug has always followed me, and I'd say um, it just fully manifested into you know, me being an artist. And um, I remember someone was asking me this question when was the first time you were called an artist, and you know, when was the first time you were even referred to as a creative? And, you know, it really made me realize even, like, right from when I was eight, you know, people thought I was different, you know, but mm. not even different from, you know, a weird point of view. They just thought that, you know, I saw things differently. I had a different gaze. Mm. And, you know, I think, um, you know, the majority of my teenage and my adult life were just me finding who I am. And, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and it just manifested into, you know, me being... Uh, visual artist so mm. so yeah I think I've done my fair run of like you know creativity I think the next thing I need to do now is like direct a film because mm. it's a full circle yeah. 
and yeah, let's so, see where the world is. So I guess next question I wanted to know is, who are your three biggest artistic inspirations and why? Whoa, whoa. Um, you know, first and foremost, like, you know, um, I'd say Picasso, you know, he's dead, God rest his beautiful soul for living all this, all these germs to the world. But, you know, the reason why I say Picasso is, um, I'd say because of his work ethic, you know, people always say like, you know, Picasso is overrated or, you know, why is he so, but like when you really see the, the amount of work, he made over like 20,000 works, you know, this mm -hmm. guy worked, you know, it was like, I'd say like for me, my aspiration is to, you know, master my craft to that level. I remember there was this time I was at the MoMA mm -hmm. and the whole of the top floor of the MoMA was an exhibition of Picasso's sculptures, mm -hmm. just his sculptures. And, you know, I didn't even know him as a sculptor. I just knew him as a painter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just on that level, I think um, I really respect his work ethic yeah um another artist that say that is my inspiration is jeff Koons. Mm -hmm. i say jeff Koons because you know i think uh he's a, uh, I think he's special i think he has a beautiful mind in terms of like he picks like an object you know as little as like let's say a balloon that's the whole world currently to an honest object and then he expands it to like a scale like bigger than life you know mm. like he expands it to like 20 feet like a balloon door you know mm. and i think there's just that amazing amazing work in the spectacle of yeah. executing it to even a level where it reflects and you see yourself mm. you know i think uh i think for me jeff Koons really you know pushed what art could be mm -hmm. and you know i really think he's also like the founding father of you know all this everything happening in the art world today yeah. and yeah just for that you know as a living artist you know i put him on that scale mm -hmm. i mean the last one i think i have to dedicate this to a nigerian because yeah. i'm a nigerian so i'd right. say um victor ekpok you know just because you know again He's, he has this handwriting, you mm. know, yeah, you know, which is very inspired by, you know, his background yeah. as, you know, as a Nigerian and like, you know, is the insibidy mm -hmm. and, you know, I think he presents in a very modern way and, you know, he presents it in a very, um, in a very beautiful and, you know, and, uh, accessible way that you know makes you enjoy culture taking culture and you know and also want to be a part of culture because mm -hmm. you know culture is supposed to look beautiful mm -hmm. it's supposed to look appealing and you know i also really respect him because he's also very well accomplished yeah. you know and he's also um you know he's also someone that i think is really like you know working on changing the narrative on what it is to be a creative and uh, Nigerian, yeah. yeah, yeah. So definitely Picasso, Jeff Koons, Koons, <laughs> and most importantly, Victor Epoch, yeah. who would probably go into that bracket of neo African <laughs> artists. Dare I say? <laughs> yeah, that, definitely, definitely. Yeah, man. But like for. For, for, for the listeners that want to learn more and be more in terms of their craft, what particular skill would you say that you had or that you developed over time or realized you had that really helped you advance creatively? Mm -hmm. I'd say uh, my gaze. I think I have a, I think I just have a gaze as to when I see something. I can break it down to its full element of like let's say the caricature of a thing mm -hmm. and highlight that yeah. um, but I'd say for me I didn't just find that immediately right because if you look at my f earlier pieces you know mm -hmm. you would actually laugh <laughs> you know so even like today when people are like hi Dennis we want to get your earlier pieces I'm right like, I don't even want to show it you know but you know I think um, my advice is that you know it's like with with something like your craft you know something that you do 
you know it's a constant development phase yeah. you're constantly growing you're constantly improving you're constantly getting better mm -hmm. and i'll just uh give people more context into my my own work ethic and how yeah. i how i work like so basically um there are 365 days in a year mm -hmm. and i'd say in those 365 days traveling you know is like 30 days yeah those are the only 30 days where i'm not working and when mm -hmm. i say when I, i'm not working i'm not like painting you know i'm not creating i'm not immersing myself in the process so i think um if i've done this since 2016 you know it's 2018 now like so basically that's a <laughs> that's like how many days of work how many right. hours of work you know and sometimes i work on sundays you know sometimes i work on saturday not even sometimes most times you know i work around the clock you yeah. know and stuff like that so yeah. you know it's when you really spend that much time on what you do and your crafts like you really improve like you know you really get better you really you know start to focus on like details you know you work faster you yeah. know you can push out an idea like that will take you a year to bring out in three months just because you've perfected the process mm -hmm. so i think um you know in terms of crafts in order to find your source you know what you offer you really have to focus and you know love it you know you have yeah. to make good love to it yeah. and um <laughs> and you know you know there's this idea in nigeria that i, I really hate you know people are always like you know double your hustle you know even like mainstream song is like alaye double your hustle but you know i feel like you also have to be a specialist in what you offer right. you know like you know what are the offerings that let's say an international establishment can come into nigeria and they're like yo you're the plug to this yeah right. and we know that you're going to execute it to the finest degree trust me like it's more valuable than you know having a side business in fashion where you're just making trad <laughs> you know what value are you yeah. actually adding to the society right. if you're not like specializing so mm -hmm. you know i think a lot of creatives a lot of uh even a lot of people working nine to fives you know while it's important to yeah to you know have that extra income you know it's i think you're you're kind of a nuisance to the society when like people are ordering yeah. again trad from you and you're not uh, delivering on time right <laughs> you know like you're really you're really like you know affecting everybody and, yeah. Uh, yeah you know i think uh, some people can you know have the talent to do many things but like first and foremost focus focus on building you know one thing mm -hmm. and i think for me like i really focused you know i really made that sacrifice in like you know there were opportunities to you know work with friends who had like amazing startups and i was like nah i just want to focus on my craft lock yeah. myself in and you know i think with time like you know it pays off you know yeah so, yeah yeah definitely is there anything that you weren't so good at starting out that you had to develop uh yeah yeah definitely i'd say um i wasn't so good at talking about my work <laughs> oh snap that's a big one <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly damn exactly that's crazy how did you like how did you manage or how did you like be able to grow out of that yo i think i was lucky because of the connections i made i i think it was more like the individual connections so yeah. Like, I remember when I first started, uh, I was working with a gallery. I don't want to call names. I was working with a gallery earlier. Or rather, I'll call names. You know, I was working with Rayleigh. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were, you know, really taking in my works. You know, it was doing well. You yeah. know, but, like, I think we had a relationship where we could have a conversation. And with that relationship, they were more patient because they wanted to hear what I had to say. Yeah. So you ramble, 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 ramble till you get to the main source. And yeah. I think what most people saw then was like the raw passion, yeah. I'd say. But like, I think the more I've grown, the more I'm also learning about the work and the more I'm also learning how to kind of contextualize what I'm trying to do. Yeah. yeah so I'd say when I first started, I really did not know how to 
express my ideas in terms of like so I was thinking of like you know um, eradicating um, suffering mm -hmm. you know and stuff like that yeah. like it was like what do you want to say what are you trying to say yeah. and you know so in essence as an artist mm -hmm. it's okay not to have the answers in yeah. the beginning you know people ask you so what does this mean is like I mean it's okay to ramble you know it's okay to also try to make that meaning mm -hmm. but like I think you also have to be very patient and honest with yourself mm -hmm. so with time you know yeah. the 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 truth comes yeah yeah, yeah. I guess for, for people starting out what do you advise in terms of how to get your work out there especially like on on a regional and global scale man first and foremost i'd say like uh you've taken shit from your parents you've taken shit from your girlfriend taking shit from your boyfriend you've taken shit from your brothers your sisters you've taken shit from everybody the least you can do after taking all this shit is to push that work you're creating put it at like like you've taken all this shit so your best out. response is to put it out yeah. and how do you put it out again you know like we have everything free to us you know we have wikipedia we have google we have youtube we have everything so i'd say like you know first and foremost like you know social media we're in an age where like the artist is empowered mm. in terms of like you don't need like you know another source in order to be noticed you don't need like an agent mm. you know now you're your agent or your marketer you are your um your your business developer you're printing your own card so you know i'd yeah. say um first and foremost like you know really concentrate on your content yeah and again i'll say this this is very raw yeah. <laughs> and very honest but even as a startup musician you know i've said this before i feel like for example like we have whiskey david o who are at the top of their game yeah and whiskey has dropped how many songs this year mm -hmm. david o has dropped how many songs this year there's no excuse why a startup musician only has one song out the whole year i don't give a damn if yeah. yo you, you content ah. <laughs> you know like content must be consistent so Woo! like i think you must be consistent with your content like yeah. come on like if david o and whiskey and burner boy are releasing burner boy has released over 20 songs this year Based how this. can you compete with that content that right. is content yeah and as a creative you're in we're now in the age of content so yeah, compete man. on content and yeah. In all honesty, if you look at everybody's dis discography, everybody's mm -hmm. work, like the more you put out, eventually someone will connect with one. Yeah, right. Eventually someone will connect with two. Mm -hmm. Eventually you're, you're you're feeding your fans yeah, as well. Yeah, and then they have a world to actually explore. <laughs> exactly. Find you. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, and people even that even talk about you, it's not just, oh, listen to this song by this guy. Yeah. They have, okay, listen to this and then this. And then even like, with the radio stations or whatever with the galleries mm -hmm. they have more things to rotate right you know they can't just show one work you create one hit and you're gone all oh, year bro it's not enough like you know like you can't sell out you can you can you can form okay yeah we did a show in a small stuff and we sold out but it's bigger than that you know you have to really put in the work you have to in the the, the 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 songs that you know yeah you, you're not really feeling but like you express that so release it yeah, you know so that. you know i think um for me it's just important as an artist to as much as possible you know yeah. you know release content um show your work you know work hard you know um be honest also with your work that you do mm -hmm. and um yeah it's like you know for example you know when you when you made your website mm -hmm. you know i remember going and i was like look at the level of work do you understand like you can go to many other people like many other creatives websites and you can't even see that much work do you understand and it's like when you put in that much work you deserve to do every number ever mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and you know i always go back to this uh this kind of west um line in spaceship where he was like, uh, imagine locking yourself in a room for three 
months a year like so basically the, the what he was saying was that every three months every summer he made like a beat every day in summer mm. you know this was before he blew mm. and then when you really calculate it three three uh, summer is three months mm-hmm. you know three months that's 30 days mm-hmm. <laughs> so for 30 plus 30 plus 30 that's yes. 90 days for three for three years he made beats imagine wow. bro he deserves to do then he ended the, the line by saying i deserve to do these numbers i'm like yeah. yo if Kanye yeah. west wants a whole, if oh, Kanye west wants crazy. to record in wyoming like take yeah. him there like if you're the record record label take him there he's done his time he's yeah. done his numbers he's yeah. done do you understand like and that's the real honest truth like you know I don't believe in in a creative that just waits for the vibe to come like you know mm-hmm. nah man you have to bring the vibe to yeah, you man. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah that's what's up bro yeah. i guess the end i want to know if you had if you got to have like a like a mutation or a superpower of sorts <laughs> like what would it be what? whoa if i had a superpower yeah. what would it be yeah um i mean i'd say if i had a superpower <laughs> what would it be that's actually a question yeah, i want to you can have any superpower think about it anything as far as you can imagine i think if i could have a superpower I think I want an enlightenment power where once I touch somebody, they are enlightened. Yeah. You know, I think that's what I really want. Yeah. I think that's what I want. Outside so, of people, time. <laughs> yeah, like an enlightenment, the enlightenment man. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, when you read the Bible and you're like, people touch Jesus yeah, yeah, and, they like the and they were healed. And they were healed. You know, I think um, I just want to just go through, like, let's say, streets like in marina just you know when someone steals and everybody is like trying to burn the person you know just just walk through that streets you know and like people just touch you and you know they just see it just as a fact of like you know yeah he stole but like you know what is this like why did he have to steal like you know you don't know what people are dealing with to be pushed to that level yeah you know so i think for me i just really would like uh uh, something where you know you just enlighten someone to even understand that us having a disagreement doesn't mean that um, you're evil mm. or like you have bad intentions. It just means that we have we're looking at this from two different perspectives, and it's okay, you know, because the way I see things is different from the way you see things, and yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. Alright, well, it seems like that's the end of our show. Nepa has been sure enough to remind us that we're in Africa. TIA, um, thank you for being on the show with us. Yeah. You know, it's been a pleasure. Yes. Yeah, yes. man. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure to invest my time in, you know, in, you know speaking and, you know, just enlightening everyone about my practice, what I do, and, uh, yeah, I look forward to, to, to more conversations. Amen, amen. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Peace. Oh. Never.